This is V from a Canadian RV array. In this video, what I'm doing is I'd like to talk about um, installing or how I installed my DISH pay-as-you-go network. And again, uh, we're just looking at the screen here and it's just uh, in, in uh, again, screensaver mode uh, from the, the DISH system. But uh, what this is, I've seen a lot of uh, chats on, uh, on Facebook pages of uh, the various groups that we're with and they were talking about you know, how to install a dish system, and if I wanted to do it myself, what do I have to do, and all about the connections that are on the RV and so on. So let me see if I can touch on a few points and explain how I did my installation. So again, this is now my dish install, and what I have is there's the TV, which is a 4K TV, and it, up, it upgrades from, uh, from 1080p. So what I have is a cupboard right here. And what I installed everything is right in here. And I'm just gonna move a little closer and I have a light uh, on um, uh, that you can see everything. So now, this is the, the Wally. -E. This is the new version Wally, -E, which is I believe version two. And what I mean by that is uh, the remote controller on the Wally -E one was um, infrared. All right, so the, the, the challenge was when I had this door closed like this, you couldn't get any control because you needed uh, the infrared, the eyes had to see each other for it to work. So the wall, I, I swapped out the Wally -E, uh, to the Wally -E 2, I believe that's the number. And so now this one is IR, um, sorry, not infrared, it's, um, it's, it's, it's frequency, frequency controlled. All right, so it's RF, that's what I'm trying to say. All right, so now that I, I can control my, my dish network with um, my controller with this now totally closed and it works great. Now, what I've done is here's the actual controller right there, that's, that's the box. I also purchased the hard drive recorder, which is right there, and now that I can record movies um, whenever I want to record something off uh, the dish network. Then what I have is I have um, a Wingard, I believe it's the Wingard G2 model, and there's the controller for it right there. And you can see there's dip switches right on the top. Uh, those dip switches on the top uh, choose to whatever you wanted to set it to, either being Dish, um, Shaw, uh, I think it can do Bell too, I'm not sure about that in Canada, so in Canada you would get Shell, uh, Shaw and Bell, and the US you would get Dish and Direct. All right, so there's where the controller is. Now, here is the challenge, because what you have to do is right from the bottom, well, sorry, the top part right there, that gray coax, that cannot go anywhere except right to the Dish connection. And why is that? For the simple reason is the power that runs the dish comes from this little box right here. I don't have a secondary cable going up to the power of the dish. It's all powered through the coax connection and the frequency also the channels and everything come through the same um, coax cable. Now, a lot of people I've noticed on Facebook are saying, hey, I, I, I've wired it through my, uh, my RV wiring or my coax and it's not working. Well, it can't work because usually what happens with the coax that it's, it's wired into the RV, unless they brought in a specific wire from the roof into some kind of entertainment cabinet that you can get access to, it won't work. You have to be directly connected. Now, um, the cable also too, I went out and purchased the very best um, uh, cable that I could find. The cable that I purchased is RG6. And what I mean by that, RG6 is the, the cable that you need to for a coax. And also this cable is three times shielded. All right, so it's the very best cable that I could find because it's funny, when I, I picked up the cable the first time, 50 feet, 100 feet from Walmart, and I thought, oh, this is great. I'll just put some ends on it and make it work. Well, unfortunately, it didn't work. And after talking to the technicians at DISH said, no, you need the best cable you can possibly get because it's, it supplies power through it and also signal. And the other issue was that it can only be 25 feet in length from the dish 
to that point right there. And of course, this little point right here, it comes off the bottom there and goes right into my Wally, which is right there. Power, there's the uh, HDMI and the two USBs, because I have also, I've got the, the USB key, which gives me the uh, internet connection uh, to my, my Wally. Now, also what I've done right there is I have an HDMI one in, three out splitter because I, I split the signal from here. So when we're not watching this TV, uh, we can watch it on the bedroom TV. Now, and again, because of the remote controller is um, radio controlled, it has the distance that I could go into the bedroom and we can control the dish system. So a very nice way to do it and, and don't have to worry about uh, cabinets or closing doors or anything. So that's what that is right there. So again, just to recap, Dish is called pay as you go. And the nice thing about it is when we RV uh, anytime when we want the service, we'll pay for it. It comes on within two or three minutes of, of paying the account. We don't pay the account, it, we automatically get dropped off uh, the service. And I believe there are just some of the channels, and I'm gonna try this, I don't know what's gonna come out of it, but uh, we'll see if uh, it says resuming session and see if anything comes up. Uh, the dish, yeah, of course, you see, we're deactivated right now, and uh, that's why they want us to uh, go online or, or call that number to purchase, so um, that's not going to work. Um, well, there it is. I mean, we, we're getting, now, we can still run the hard drive. Any movies that I've got on my hard drive, I can use, I can watch those anytime, even without the service, and since we're not RVing right now, we're in, in our downtime, um, I, I don't pay for the service, and of course, they, um, uh, they, uh, take me offline. All right, again, a recap. I've got a Wally 2, I've got the recorder, I've got the uh, Wi-Fi connection, and then the wind guard. Now, I'm gonna go out and we're gonna fly the drone and I'm gonna show you how I actually, where and how I installed the dish, which was really cool. And I thought uh, that would be a good thing to see, but we're gonna do it through the drone because I don't really wanna climb up on the back of the ladder and that's where I mounted it. And you'll see what I mean by that. Um, just to, to walk you through quickly, um, what I did is when, when I put the wires in, I'm just going to open up this cabinet right here. And you can see where I ran the wire, there's that gray wire that comes up and it goes all the way down and it goes underneath and underneath all those cableways. And unfortunately, every install is going to be totally different. So I, I really can't show you any more than that. Um, only for the simple fact is you've got a snake the, the coax, um, the RG6, uh, into the, to the, your entertainment cabinet, and it cannot go anywhere else, not through switches, not through anything at all. It must be a direct connection, and the closest connection you can make, the better. All right, let's go outside, and, and I'll show you how I... So here we are outside now, and you can see where I've mounted the dish right on the ladder, and I snake the wires right down the back of the ladder there and into the back bedroom and then into my entertainment system. But what this is, this is a plate that you can purchase from Wingard on their website. I believe it's $99 when I purchased it. I'm not sure the price today, but it's really nice because you see, now there's no holes on the roof and I'm kind of really sticky on putting holes in my roof. Uh, the fewer, the better, the happier I am from any kind of potential leaks. So what you do is you mount the plate on one of the legs of the ladder and you rest it on one of the rungs. And I've had it up there for four years now, you might say, and, it, and it's perfect. So here's a quick look at my roof. Now, there's only two things that I have on there. It's my Wii Boost um, with the Trekkers antenna and the Wi-Fi Ranger, which I'll be changing very soon, I hope, as I'm having some problems with my Wi-Fi Ranger. But you can see, little as possible on the roof, just what the manufacturer put up there, and I like to keep it nice and clean that way. So again, going back to the point of how I mounted it, and you can see here it's on a plate. It's very solid. Um, we've been through some pretty rough roads and it stays up there quite nice. And here's another shot of it a little lower and then snaking the wire right down. Again, this is V. Hope you've enjoyed the install video. Please give us a thumbs up. Please, please subscribe and we'll see you in our next video. Thank you so much for watching. See you again. Thank <laughs> you.